Hello, this is Old Radio Guy with another in my series of Photoline for Photographers, an alternative external editor. Photoline works with Lightroom, DxO Optics Pro, AC-DC Pro, Zoner Photo Studio, and other similar RAW converters and digital asset managers. This short video explains how to customize Photoline, how to change panel selection and placement, how to assign and reassign keyboard shortcuts, how to add or remove icon buttons, and how to make other operational changes. If you're coming to Photoline after using another more conventional photo editor, some of the operations and terms may be unfamiliar. But one thing you can do to make PL more comfortable is customize the interface. I'm demonstrating with a Windows PC, but Photoline is also available for the Mac platform, and customizing for the Mac is very similar. First, let's take a moment to revisit the Panels option I mentioned in an earlier video. Here in the flyout, we have a listing of all the panels that can be used in Photoline, and those panels with the little blue square outline here on the left-hand side of the flyout are the panels that are in operation currently. And in my setup, I have most of them configured to appear on the right hand of my work area, beginning with tool settings at the top. I have adjustment layer, actions, layers, map, and undo list. The panels are very flexible. You can collapse the panels, open the panels, you can turn the panels off, you can pull the panels away from their configuration to have them floating or to move them to be docked in another area. And let's take a second look at Simple Browse, the panel that we discussed uh, in my uh, last video. And initially I indicated that Simple Browse could not be docked to the bottom, but that has been changed. The developers have apparently corrected that bug, and I just discovered that uh, it is possible now in uh, this beta that I'm working with. And now, Simple Browse was initially designed as kind of a floating uh, browse window so that you could easily access the folder you're working with, but now uh, it is possible to use it in what I think is a, a much better way, and that is as a docked film strip. And what I'm doing here is configuring it so that I can use it as a dock film strip at the bottom. And we're looking at a folder with that includes the image that's open here on the screen. I can add a new layer to the current image by simply dragging the image from the film strip down at the bottom onto the screen. And now I have the purple pear image over the downhill ride image. So drag and drop over an open image puts the image from the film strip in as a, a second layer. Now I'll turn this layer off. If I want to open a second image as a separate image document, then I need to double click. Double click and I can go up here to Windows and check, and I have two images open, two separate images open. So the basic rule is here, double click if you want to open the image from the film strip as a separate image, drag and drop if you want to add the image from the film strip as an additional layer in your open image. For other customization of photo line from the Edit drop-down menus, it's Edit Options. And here we have a window that gives you access to most of the information about how to customize Photoline. There are seven categories of Photoline functions that can be modified from here. I'll concentrate on those changes most important for making Photoline a better fit for your operational requirements. At the bottom of the window are three buttons. Cancel closes the window without making any changes. Apply puts the change you have just made into effect. And 
If it's something visible like the icon added to a bar, you can see that immediately. OK accepts all of the changes you have made up to that point and closes the Options window. File Save Options Here's an option box to create backup file when saving. Check that box if you want to make certain you make a copy of the original file before saving with changes made in editing. A good idea for some. For others, it might overpopulate their directories with backup files, but this option is there if you need it. Display Transparency Photoline has its own unique color for displaying a transparency area. If you're used to another color from a competing photo editor and want to change that, you do it here by choosing a new color from the drop-down palette. Select the color you want with the eyedropper. The same is true for mask colors. If you're used to another color for mask, you want to change, make the alteration here from the drop-down palette. A reminder that Photoline distinguishes between two kinds of its processes. One is document, the other is picture. A document would be a desktop publishing file and could have multiple pages. A picture would be an image you create or open. Photoline distinguishes between the picture and document workspace frames with two different colors. And here behind this window, you see a picture open and we have a dark frame for the picture. If I went to New and selected New Document, you notice the frame for this new document is a lighter gray. You can change these two colors if you like. All of the functions listed under Options Browse dictate the behavior of Photoline Browse, the special window for finding images, searches, keywords, and metadata, batch processing, etc. Before I talk about the options here, let's look at the Browse window. Browse can be accessed in a couple of ways. One, you can go to File and go down to the Browse listing. You can use the keyboard shortcut of Control-B or if you have the icon on your general toolbar up here, you can access it by clicking on that icon tool. In the Browse window on the right, you have a listing of the images that are in the selected folder. Underneath the thumbnails are a series of lines that contain information. I have all of the uh, possible listings here checked, so, so there's a lot of data here you probably wouldn't want to have as much you have that option for seeing a lot of information. On the left side is a Windows Explorer-like folder hierarchy for finding and selecting your folder of choice. Below that on the left side is a box with four tabs. Prop for Properties shows the properties of the file. ITPC lists the IPTC data contained in the file. EXIF lists the EXIF data in the file. And then Keywords list keywords that uh, might be included in the file. At the top of the Browse window is a combination menu toolbar. One of the two drop-down menus at the very left is the gear icon. Among the operations there are the creation of a picture catalog, how to create a slideshow, batch converting so that you can apply certain operations to a series of images, and sometimes important, search pictures. Most of the operations listed here can also be added as icons in this toolbar icon bar along the top. Now let's return to the Browse options. The Preview section allows the user to specify what information is to appear beneath the image thumbnails that I showed you a moment ago in Browse. You select the check boxes for the items that you want to see. Options Browse Icon Bar. The Icon Bar options allows you to select the functions that appear at the top of the Browse window. As I indicated earlier, these duplicate the menu listings. Note, unlike the main toolbar customization options I'll cover in a moment, currently in Windows, changes here are limited to selecting, unselecting, and moving icons. The icon appearance cannot be changed. On the right are the buttons that are set to appear in that icon bar in Browse. 
And over here on the left are the options you have for adding to that browse. If I wanted to add, I would select and select the point on the left here where I want to add it. So select copy pictures, for example, and I press this double arrow button in the middle and copy pictures appears underneath. If I want to delete that, I select copy pictures and select delete. Back to PL Browse for a moment. Here in PL Browse, we see thumbnails for all of the images that appear in the selected directory. This directory has a mix of JPEGs and PhotoLine's native format PLD images. If you were using Windows Explorer, if you browse the same folder, you would see only a generic icon, not a thumbnail, for the PLD image, unless you had a third-party codec from Picture Viewer installed. With that third-party codec, you are able to see a thumbnail for the PLD images, and those special images are indicated by the photo line icon. I think Zoner Photo Studio is the only free browser editor that will currently show the photo line thumbnail outside of photo line itself. I believe I'm correct in stating this is not an issue in the Mac version of photo line. You can see all of the thumbnails there. Now let's get back to the customization. Usage keyboard layout. This is where you enter your new keyboard shortcuts. Just select the operation. In this case I have crop selected and you see that this already has a shortcut assigned shift plus R. If I wanted to assign a new shortcut I would click the new shortcut box and then all I would have to do is hit the keyboard combination for the new uh, keyboard shortcut and that would appear in new shortcut. I press assign here or apply and OK and that would replace the shift plus R. There are a lot of options here and before you assign any new keyboard shortcuts it would probably be wise for you to check and become familiar with the keyboard shortcuts that exist. Options, Usage, Toolbars. This takes you to the section dealing with icon buttons used in the various toolbars. Here I have the general bar selected and that is the bar that appears just above the work area along the top. On the right hand side of the screen are the buttons that are currently selected in the general toolbar. In this example of the toolbar operation, I have curves selected here, and you'll notice in the right hand side under buttons, curves is already there, and then up in the general toolbar that above the work area, there's curves. Now I can delete the curve with the delete key selecting curves here, and it's gone. I'm going to add it back select curves in the left box and press the double arrow button and curves is back in the same position it was in. You can change the position of these icons for the uh, operations by clicking and dragging. And again when you finish you would apply and OK to get out of that. You can also change the look of the icons. There are three sizes and you can choose color with shadow, just plain color. Extended plugin modules is the place to point photo line to any external plugins you may have installed. Just use the browse button to locate the appropriate plugin folder. That's a quick overview of how you can modify the photo line work area to suit your needs. I hope this video has been helpful to you and thank you for watching.